Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. It's that boy G playing. Don't give a damn. He cooler than the fan. Walking real tall. Some say he's man. But I wanted I wanted to mention this. Um, you you name a named a lot of artists, but I'm gonna say Fat Pat in particular. Fat Pat and Hawk, they were, you know, what I'm saying brothers dynamic duo. Yeah. And when Fat Pat passed, it's like it took it was like a blow. Yeah, they was my cousins too. I found that. <laughs> oh, Fat Pat your cousin? Yeah. Wow. Fat Pat and Hawk. Man, mm -hmm. but Fat Pat, he like the dude was so great, and we and of course we didn't see his full potential. Right. Me. I think um, on that All About My Dough record, Pimp Tight and Fat Pat, I think that was like one of his best feature verses ever. But that's just my opinion. But when mm -hmm. he passed, like I was like I was saying, OG, um, Fat Pat, man, Fat Pat had it going. He was doing his thing, and then he passed. When he passed, like how did that, like did it shake up the city? Like like how did how did that affect everyone? Yeah, it shook up the city because it was over some nonsense, and it was just it was just a senseless dumbass killing though. Yeah. You know what I'm Any killing is not you know justified, but you know it was just really sensitive, sensitive, senseless, and over dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's crazy. And then you know after he died, you know Hawk started to really emerge as an MC. With the metaphors going crazy, blah 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 blah, and he passed too. You know what I'm saying? So it hurt. You know, I, I know it hurt the city when he passed too. Yeah, no, nah, it hurt the city when all of them passed. Mm -hmm. Everyone, all of them passed. When 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 Big Mo passed, when Big Steve passed, when Screw passed. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's always a blow to the city, man. When any when we lose any of our legends, man, three two. You know what I'm saying? It's always, you know. Damn. Now, you you knew Screw. You and Screw knew each other. We knew of each other. Okay. We didn't, like, have each other's phone number and we didn't call each other. I'm pretty sure we, you know, we knew of each other from just, from being in the game. And then we had mutual friends, too. Yes, sir. So. Okay. That's how we knew, like, you know, the beef stuff. It never was no beef. Mm -hmm. Never was no beef. Cool, cool. Cause, um, I used to but that was just street. Tape. That was just street shit. You know what I'm saying? That was just people talking on the street. We never would pull no beef. Screw never had no problem with us. I had on tape myself, and I know people have heard me say this a thousand times. Okay. I had on my tape, had on my set my tape, uh, tape myself that screw saying, I ain't got no problem with the north side. Mm -hmm. I had it on video tape. Mine. I yeah. wish I would. You know, this would have ended up being some big. You know, like it is. <laughs> I would have, you know. You ain't got the footage no more or nothing? I'm just saying, bro, I ain't got shit from them days. If we would have thought this was going to turn out to be like this, we would have everything. Yeah. Like, if you notice, that's why you really don't see a lot from them days, man. I'm about to think about that shit. Yeah, you just, yeah, just we living. We was out there getting money and living money. We were getting money. We was out there just living, getting the money. We were worried about, man, let's keep this footage for one day, man. We're going to be some niggas. We're going to be them niggas. Yeah. Well, he know we going to be them niggas. Yeah. Okay, you know okay. Now, they're doing these times. You know, the South was still, they wasn't accepted everywhere else. Y'all was trying to break y'all door down to get in in the East Coast, West Coast, and stuff like that. So during this time, you know, you know, Jay Prince, he's building up rap a lot. And Scarface and Bushwick Bill and Willie D, they, they, they coming in on, mm -hmm. a, on a mainstream level. Y'all, everybody else doing their thing. Yeah. But they, they I'm them just knocking barriers down, y'all go accept us. Mm -hmm. And that's thing you know, you got this outgoing rapper named Pimp C. Hey, South got something to say. South this, y'all want to talk about this nigga? We in the South having things. Like, you seeing all this, like from now, because the South is dominating hip-hop right now. Mm -hmm. From Atlanta, Memphis, mm -hmm. out Louisiana, Houston. Like, so sure. you seeing all this going on. Like, like, what's your thoughts on all of it right now? Back then, y'all was trying to get get accepted. Now y'all like, hey, we here. Uh, oh man, bro, we was. Yeah, we was trying to get accepted for the pub. You know, we really wasn't trying to get accepted, mm -hmm. per se. Trying to get accepted, we was saying that man, y'all gonna stop looking over us because. Houston was the number one buying market. Nobody never known. Nobody knew that. I don't mm. know what the number one buying market it is now for digital, but Houston was the number one 
buying market for his physicals, for his CDs and cassettes. Mm. Like, that's why every artist had to come through Houston. I don't care who you was. Every hip-hop artist had to come to Houston because on the record, on the stats and everything, Houston was the number one buy-in market of mm. any type of music, of, of any type of hip-hop. So I don't care if it came from New York, West Coast, we was the number one buy-in market.